This video was sponsored by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description can get a trial of Skillshare Premium for free. Hello, wanderers and wind spirits. My name is TP Sky, and well, I'm sure some of you were expecting this video to be about Kaisa, but uh, no, not yet. Not yet. But we will get to her. Anyway, League of Legends has crossed the 150 champion barrier a while back, which means that they are more League of Legends champions than Generation 1 Pokemon, which has forced me to realize that I know the lore of every League champion and the battle cry of every Generation 1 Pokemon, and I can't help but wonder what useful life skills that information is crowding out of my brain storage. Anyway, this video is called Building a Better Whatever. And before we get into it, just for context, that title means better in our opinion. As we'll discuss in the video, there is no such thing as a perfect character design. All design is a process of making trade-offs, and our design are not better as measured on, like, the objective character design goodness scale invented by Professor Design in 1987, yeah! They are better from our perspective and on our terms, and in this video we will argue for why we think so. But, uh, I'm making some references to the plural here, so I should probably introduce you. This is Apple Cork, my partner in artistic crime for this endeavor. All of the artwork of our designs that you'll see in this video will be created by him, while I handle the substantially more difficult task of talking into a microphone and putting funny pictures on the screen. Like this one! You can find links to Apple Cork's work in the description in case you want to give him a follow. Anyway, our, victor, our subject for today is Janna, the Storm's Fury, a title that really doesn't fit with either her design or her story anymore, come to think of it. Huh. It's almost as though she desperately needs an update of some kind. Long ago, in the far-flung, forgotten before times of 2009, Janna was released as part of the original crop of 40 champions that formed the core of League of Legends. And back then, she looked like this! Realizing their mistake, Riot soon corrected her colors to something that isn't like an act of war crime, giving her this, still eye-searing, but somewhat more familiar-looking color palette. Then, in 2011, she got a model update that looked like this, followed eventually by a texture update that made her look like this. So, what kind of character is Janna? What sort of person was her design meant to express? What was the story here? Well, her earliest lore was pretty simplistic, as you would expect from early League of Legends. She was an orphan in the city-state of Son, which back then was not a connected twin city with Piltover, rather they were rival states. And she lived a pretty miserable life until discovering a talent for wind magic, which gave her the means to secure for herself a better life, and also improve the conditions of the poor around her. In order to do this, she enters the League of Legends. Now, as we've noted on this channel before, originally, the League of Legends was like an actual thing in the lore. It was a big international blood sport tournament that essentially replaced mass warfare, and the champions of the video game were champions in that tournament, fighting for the political interests of themselves or their home nations. So, Janna enters the League of Legends to win money and fame and maybe, you know, build some orphanages or something. And that was basically the extent of her character as expressed. As part um, of the League of Legends tournament, by the way, Riot also used to publish an in-universe newspaper called the Journal of Justice, which was... Well, it was pretty rough uh, by modern standards. Like, Riot writers would create self-insert characters to write the articles, and one of them, like, wrote official self-insert fanfiction where his character got to date in Italy. And I think at one point, one storyline was that the journal reported rumors that, like, Janna's nudes had been leaked, and they reported on it like they were, like, a gossip rag, and it was... It was... It was uh, Anyway, the Journal of Justice is gone now, and it's probably for the better. Her lore was eventually updated a little bit along the way, with one addition stating that her mastery of wind magic actually began to change her physically, and that's why she has elf ears. But the big shift with Janna's character happens, as it does with most of the older champions, in 2014, when Riot retcons the entire League of Legends universe. They remove the in-universe League of Legends tournament in favor of a more traditional fantasy world. 
The fiction that League of Legends matches were technically somehow canon is abolished, and Summoner's Rift becomes a non-canon alternate universe playground. For Janna, this causes a minor problem, because her story kind of revolved around her being a champion in the League of Legends. Some kind of change was necessary, and I suppose that there were broadly two ways that Riot could have gone. They could either have changed the minimum necessary details and kept her a son sorceress trying to improve the social conditions of the city just without the league angle, or they could make her a god. Or, eh, well, Riot loves their terminology, and technically Janna is not a god, she's a wind spirit, a demigod of the winds. In the new story, she is, or was, worshipped by the sailors of Rune Terra, who would pray to her for favorable winds and protection from storms. She would manifest usually as a sea sparrow bluebird, but sometimes in the form of a woman, who flies around in a bikini top and hot pants for some reason. Eventually, the sailors of Rune Terra call upon her less and less as sailing technology improves, and Janna fades mostly out of memory, until a cataclysmic disaster in Zaun plunges much of the city below sea level, leaving tens of thousands suddenly at the mercy of sea currents. People remember their old faith and call out for Janna's protection, which she offers in the forms of winds and gales that hold back the waters and sweep away the toxic smoke of the disaster. And in the years since then, Janna has become a household god in Zaun, acting as a sort of goddess of fresh air, protection both from the toxic smog of Zaun and, to a lesser extent, the violence of, you know, the capitalist exploitation that runs that particular region. So, how does all of that translate into her design? It doesn't. It doesn't translate into her design. Janna is an elf mage. That's... that's what she is. She is a stereotypical high fantasy elf mage who floats around in her underwear because... because League of Legends at launch was not a game especially concerned with originality. As we discussed in the Building a Better Ash video, League of Legends was originally designed to be essentially a reworked port of Defense of the Ancients, with the serial numbers filed off so Blizzard couldn't claim copyright over any of the assets. It was being created by what was, at the time, a genuine small indie company flying by the seat of their pants. What 2009 Riot needed was a bunch of broadly recognizable character archetypes to stuff into their game as fast as possible, and everything else had to come after. Lore and story was at least from an outsider's perspective, essentially an afterthought. So Janna, who is ostensibly this hard-bitten orphan from a rapidly industrializing city-state run on mad science, looks like a stereotypical high-fantasy elf mage who floats around in her underwear. Her Hextech skin tries to imagine a slightly more lore-accurate look for her, but from a design perspective, she was at the time essentially only really meant to be eye-catching, which, arguably, she succeeded at being at the time. But League of Legends has moved on, gaming itself has rather moved on, and Janna's design hasn't moved with it. When most people see this character, they see, again, a stereotypical elf mage. They see a half-naked fantasy babe who is entirely designed to be eye candy. They don't see an ancient wind spirit or demigod worshipped by sailors and coastal dwellers. They don't see a goddess of fresh air guarding a choking city against toxic smoke. Now, to be clear, the problem isn't that this design couldn't possibly be a wind spirit. A generic high fantasy elf mage floating around in her underwear could be any number of things. Show me this design and tell me it's supposed to be a wind spirit, and I'll be like, okay, sure, I guess. Tell me that she's a demigod of fresh air, and I'll be like, Okay, sure, I guess. But you could also tell me that she's a street magician, or a court mage. You could tell me that she's Demacian, Noxian, from the Freljord, Targon, or Ionia. You could tell me that she's from Smite, and my answer would still be... Okay, sure, I guess. She looks generic enough to be anything, which means that her design specifically communicates very little. She has no fashion that ties her to any region. She has no distinctive features that mark her out as a special kind of being, much less a spirit or a god. The only thing she really has are her elf ears, which just make her look like an elf, which she isn't. Speaking of fashion, though, she's not wearing very much of it. Now, as we discussed, Janna is half-naked originally, almost certainly just because it was supposed to be eye-catching, which... okay. But that's basically the same design strategy as those old internet banner ads with a hot lady on them saying like, Play now, my lord! It's tacky, and especially for a game as big and popular as League of Legends, 
it's kind of cringeworthy. And also, she's not even that hot. Like, if the idea of this design was, oh yeah, let's attract some attention with a smoking hot sexy fantasy babe, then I'm like, that's the best you could come up with? This is the limit of your erotic imagination? That's as spicy as you were willing to go? Champion designs like Evelyn, Elise, Ari, and even Syra have done a substantially better job at being sexually alluring in various ways. By comparison, Janna is just like some lady floating around in hot pants and a strapless top. She's not exactly scandalous or titillating. In the story, as it's written nowadays, Janna is a benevolent protector god who rarely manifests fully in her humanoid form. And looking at Janna as presented in the game, you don't really get the sense of an ethereal, otherworldly mirage presence. Especially showing so much skin, she feels very physical and present, like she's made of flesh and blood. She feels human and vulnerable. She doesn't really look like a supernatural interdictor or protector deity. She looks, and I'm sorry to repeat myself so much, like a million other floaty high fantasy elf mages. So, in summary, the problems with Janna's design that we want to try and address in this video are the following. Number one, she looks like a generic elf mage. Number two, her design does not clearly make her look like a spirit or a god. Number three, she has no visual connection to her region, Son, or to her past as a sea goddess. And number four, her design is sexy for no discernible or useful reason. If we can solve these problems, then hopefully, we really will have built a better Janna. Subjectively. Say hello to Natalia Verauku Trykovska and their fan made redesign of Janna, which is really, really good. They seem to have started from some of the same problems as we identified in the original design that it's generic, that it doesn't look supernatural, that it lacks elements of wind magic, and so on. The solutions that Baraku have identified are, frankly, excellent. Their version of Janna seems to be centered around a single, extremely eye-catching feature. Those thick-ass th This glowing, magical core, a center around which the rest of her body swirls like smoke. And it works fantastically. This one feature instantly marks out Janna as supernatural or possibly divine being. It instantly associates her with air and the ethereal, and it implies that the body we see is some kind of smoky projection or construct surrounding the real core of who she is. That airiness is accentuated by bringing over the floaty hair, which is admittedly technically present in the current Janna, but where current Janna's hair is always just kind of poking straight up in essentially an onion shape, Viraoku's Janna has a much more distinctly floaty aesthetic to the hairstyle, really aiding the idea that she's this floating, constantly billowing creature. And to return to her, um, Thighs, Janna's general anatomy and look here is substantially more mature than the original, where current Janna is skinny and slight and very young looking. This Janna has, for lack of a better term, MILF energy. She looks like a grown ass woman, someone who's been around a while, not old, but mature. An impression that is aided by her visible defined cheekbones and makeup, those red lips especially. That sense of age and experience also gives her an air of confidence, and this has an additional benefit. Janna is, as we discussed, a protector and guardian, a caretaker spirit. Having her present as a mature woman gives her parent energy, the reassurance of being taken care of by someone older and wiser, and it makes her feel more powerful and dependable. Miraco's redesign addresses almost every single point of criticism that we have raised, and as an added bonus, depending on your perspective, even manages to improve Janna's function as eye candy. This is a very good-looking character with a mature beauty and appeal that League of Legends isn't already overloaded with. All of which begs the question, what the hell are me and Apple Cork doing, then? If the design has already been fixed, why bother making this video? Just do a video on Viraoku's design and call it a day. And well, actually, Viraoku's excellent redesign is exactly why I wanted to do this video. One of the themes I want to have running through this series is that character design is not a settled science. No creative endeavor is. Viraoku's design hasn't fixed Janna because... Because, well, that's not how design works. You can't fix it because there is no ideal, flawless state to fix it to. What Viraoku has done brilliantly, and what we are going to try to do, is examine the original design and the character story that's there and say, 
here's our version, and here's why we think it works better. And I will stand by my opinion that both me and Apple Cork's versions and Veroku's version are gonna be much better than the vanilla version that's currently in the game, but as I noted in the intro to the video, this isn't an Ah yeah, we have measured the character design on the character design goodness scale, and we have found that ours is way better, yeah. It's a critical argument. And the reason why I'm hammering this principle home so hard and repeating myself so much is because I know that if I don't, I'm gonna have to deal with three months of people in the comments who absolutely refuse to understand the idea that art is inherently subjective and that all arguments about art, every single one, all of them, no exceptions, including the one you're coming up with in your head right now, yes, that one too, are subjective as well. So, Veraku has delivered this very good version of Janna, which solves a lot of the issues we identified. We are going to propose our versions of the character and intentionally make them different from Viraku's to demonstrate the point that there is never just one way to solve a design problem. Anyway, let's get into it. The early design process begins with rapid thumbnailing and ideation. We are at this stage throwing everything against the wall and just seeing what sticks. How much should her hair define about her design? Do we keep the streamers on her hips from the original, or should we try for a cloak, or a robe, or nothing at all? Should we keep it simple? Make it elaborate? And what should her body shape be? Hourglass shaped and classically feminine, or something more elfin and slight? Personally, I begin to lean towards the idea of a version of Janna that is more ethereal, less human while Applecork decides to try for a more traditionalist version of the character, keeping the general vibes of the original, while making more conservative changes. Next, we start working on ideas for her face. One of my personal big bugbears with League of Legends women is that so many of them look like their faces were copy-pasted from an issue of generic character design monthly. Eye shape and size, cheekbones, jawlines, noses, proportions, these features are all, in my opinion, criminally underused in Riot's design aesthetic. So we try out a number of different variations, including, and I quite like this one, taking away as many facial features as possible to make her inhuman, incorporating almost alien-like features like big blank eyes and turning her tiara into a kind of forehead crest. I push for an incorporation of androgyny, or more specifically, I push for a de-emphasizing of the usual visual stylizations associated with femininity, because the design idea that's emerging in my head is one that pushes Janna towards a different kind of gender expression. Now, androgyny is a complex thing. In a design, it can be achieved in a lot of different ways. Here, we try to get there by getting rid of things like strong eyeliner, emphasized lips, and other typical stylizations that are associated with femininity in art design. But it should be noted that you can also achieve androgyny by going the other way, by applying heavy makeup and doing a lot of stylization and design. Viraku's design has this voluptuous high femme energy, so being a bloody contrarian, obviously I am running in the exact opposite direction. Applecork, meanwhile, gravitates to a mix of the alien-like features we tried with a more traditionally femme presentation. Then there is the matter of the staff. It's an iconic piece of equipment for the original Janna. Or, well, I think it looks like a malformed mess, and in my opinion, all it does for Janna is make her look even more like a stereotypical elf mage by giving her a typical wizard staff. Neither Applecork nor I feel especially like we want the staff to be a part of our designs, but we run it through an ideation phase just to see mixing supernatural with material elements. Ultimately, we both decide that Janna's story is that she is the wind, and therefore why would she need any special instruments to do the things she does. Plus, we think that having her carry around a physical object like that makes her less ethereal and more concrete, less like a living wisp of wind and more like a floaty person carrying stuff around. Still, 
I am drawn to the idea of a version of Janna that carries around trinkets like pocket watches or bird feathers and little offerings from people's shrines to her name, who perhaps uses fishing nets as clothes and a harpoon as a staff. That too could be a good interpretation of the character and would visually tie her much more strongly to her region than either Varauku's or our final designs do. Anyway, for me, I have decided on a more top-heavy silhouette. I decided to keep a version of the streamers that she already has because they have the convenient ability to float and billow in the wind that surrounds her, which is good for showing her nature in animation. I liked the idea of her hair as essentially a wisp of cloud like you might see in the sky on a clear day. And I liked the idea of hiding her body shape somewhat within a cloak that could also be filled with clouds and mist. I also fell in love with the idea of having her wear a literal fishing net as an homage to her nautical origins, and I decided to make her base presentation ultimately inhuman, with blue skin and glowing pupil-less eyes to make her look as much like a wind elemental as possible. Where I am emphasizing her as an elemental or wind spirit, Apple Cork experimented with various ways to make her more alien or traditionally god-like. So his design incorporates more gold ornaments, more distinct clothing pieces, and a more specific gender presentation with more makeup and feminine stylization. He was looking for a version of Janna which was alien to humanity, not malicious, but somewhat divinely distant. A being who you would have to worship because it's not quite human enough to be a peer with you. Okay, before we move on to the final design phases, if you're familiar with my channel, you may have heard the joke that a character would be S-tier if they were naked. The context for that is that during a stream, I was complaining about Janna's design, saying that if she's supposed to be eye candy, then she's boring eye candy, and if they really wanted to make her an alluring wind spirit, they should just have made her straight up naked. Commit to the bit. If you want to play the sex sells card, then a floating lady in a bikini is a boring sales pitch. So, since we're here anyway, if you want to design a Janna that would actually be a bit risque, now you're actually risking trouble with the sensors. Now you're pushing the envelope a little bit. Now you are taking a creative risk. And if you want to justify it in the lore, well, hey, she was invented by sailors, a group of people famously so horny that they mistook dugongs for mermaids. Now, to be clear, I don't especially think that being risque works for Janna as a character. It doesn't really fit with her lore that much. And the game has plenty of hot, skinny young women already. It doesn't need another one. But if you wanted to go with the sexy lady angle, I think these are at least more visually interesting versions of that type of character than the rather anodyne floating bikini lady we've got. So, after a lot of back and forth and editing passes and changes, we arrive at our two proposals for how to build a better Janna. <sighs> Subjectively. And we'll start with mine this time around, I think. One of my major complaints with vanilla Janna is that for someone who's meant to be a wind spirit or a demigod, who rarely have ever manifests in full form, in-game Janna looks way too much like just some guy. Like, not in terms of her gender, but in terms of, you see this legendary being of immense mythical power, and you look at them and you're like, it's just some guy, you know? It's just some someone, some person. And maybe that person can do magic, and maybe they're very powerful, but they just look like some person. What I wanted was to create a design that is unmistakably supernatural. That you look at it for a quarter of a second and you realize, oh, this is not just a person. This is something else. Now, in these artworks, we're going to be showing off the fully rendered character designs, but a central idea that we're both working from is that the vast majority of the time, you don't see these characters like this. In the lore, it's described that Janna only ever manifests fully when she unleashes her full power, so most of the time our Janna's would look more like this. Shimmering mirages or indistinct shapes of moving mist and air circled by a faithful bluebird. 
Now, that could create some problems with her readability in-game. League of Legends generally relies on clear outlines and animations telegraphing the actions of a character, and so these designs would put a lot of pressure on the visual effects to ensure that the character has clearly readable presence and hitbox. I don't think that's an unsolvable problem, but I do want to acknowledge it. So, major features of the character, well, First of all, I try to lean into a certain level of androgyny, or again, at least the absence of the most typical gendered stylizations. My Janna takes on a humanoid form, but she doesn't take on the human fascination for makeup or gender presentation. With her long hair and slender features, she still reads more feminine than masculine, I think. But what I wanted most was just to distinguish her from the typical feminine presentation of most female League of Legends champions. This Janna is not meant to be, and I'm using very big air quotes here, conventionally attractive, because being a wind spirit, that idea just wouldn't mean anything to her. Moving on, the idea of her cloak is, well, first of all, to give her a distinctive silhouette, especially when she's translucent, but also that it is essentially a billowing cloud of mist on top of which floats a fishing net, billowing gently as she moves. And I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure if the fishing net is like a really good idea for this version of the character, or if it's just something that I really fell in love with as a way to tie her back to the sea. It's just one of those ideas that I ended up liking too much to be really objective about. The gold and jewelry on her figure, on the other hand, is a compromise. It's a trade-off. In my mind, I wanted her to be completely free of those, like, really solid elements. I wanted her to only be composed of mist and air. But what I found, thinking through it, is that without something more solid, something to contrast with the rest of her, some colorful element to add structure to her character, she would visually merge into a pretty indistinct blue and white blob with no real points of interest on the character, especially from a distance. Now, another way to solve that problem might be to compose her of different colors of cloud and mist. You can do kind of a lot with value variety with those, but the other thing that I didn't want was to have her stray completely from the original Janna. I wanted to keep something that carried the visual feel of the original. Hence, there are four streamers emerging from under her cloak, mimicking the ones she has on her hip in the base design. Hence, there's the gold and orange, mirroring the gems on her original costume and the ones embedded in her staff. The blue wings on the tiara, obviously, is to tie her a little bit more explicitly visually to the bluebird that acts as her symbolic avatar. The feeling that I want this design to evoke is that you are encountering something non-human, something supernatural, ghostly perhaps, but also gentle and soft. A mild breeze on a summer's day, a gentle gust of fresh air that clears the smoke from your nostrils. She is a protector, after all. So, that is my version of a potentially better Janna. Now, let's hear from Apple Cork to describe his process. Like last time, Apple Cork has written these words, but I will be reading them to you. <clears throat> Going into the Janna project, I wasn't set on any particular direction. The only thing I really knew I wanted was to get rid of the bikini thing. Eventually, I decided on doing something similar to what I did with the Ash concept and tried to maintain as many parts of old Janna as I could while adding new ideas. Let's start with her costuming. The Wild Rift Janna model already does a lot to update her looks, so I used that design as my starting point. During the ideation stage, Skyn and I both liked the idea of taking her away from the physical world and bringing her closer to the supernatural. Since Janna is a wind spirit, she isn't really human, and so I could have fun with her tangibility. In one of my sketches, I drew her legs as broken up gusts of wind spiraling into the shape of legs with wing-like shapes sprouting from her ankles reminiscent of the Greek messenger god Hermes, and I took that idea with me into this final design. As I ideated, I found that I wanted to alter her shape language. In both League and Wild Rift, Janna's armor is very angular and pointed, with some arcs for texture. While that looks cool, I thought it made her look a bit standoffish, almost a Noxian aesthetic mixed with a bit of kale, and I wanted her to feel more approachable. 
In her lore, she's basically your friendly neighborhood wind sprite. She brings breathable air to the people of Zaun and is loved by the children. So, I rounded off the armor and introduced more organic forms similar to water or wind, which helped connect her better to some of her themes. One thing you might catch, though, is that I've significantly reduced her upper arm and shoulder costume from my ideation stages. As I was working on it, I found that it inevitably ended up resembling Irelia far too much, and other ideations ended up too sci-fi or too clean. They ended up looking like something from a skin rather than the base model, if that makes any sense. The arcs and shapes that I really wanted to implement just wouldn't look unique, and so I ended up mimicking the shape of her curved waist pieces and just copying it onto the shoulders. Skyen suggested the idea of playing with the uncanny valley early in the project, and I really wanted to find a way to incorporate that concept into my Janna. I wanted her to look beautiful, but with something a little bit off, like she'll catch your eye with her looks and you'll stare. But as you stare, you begin to realize that the figure in front of you isn't a beautiful woman using wind magic, it's something else, something only pretending to be human. And to get that inhumanity, one of the first things I wanted to change was her skin texture. So I made parts of her body mimic human skin while the rest fades into her true cloudy form. Since her skin is just wind magic, droplets of water refracting light, she can take on whatever color she wants, giving her a lot of shape-shifting options. Almost like a sort of mirage. Her hair was another fun thing to work on. Skyne and I both found her original onion hair a bit ridiculous, and since she is effectively a goddess of wind and weather, the idea of cloud hair was a straightforward choice, with the idea that the clouds can change in appearance to suit her mood. Storm clouds when she's angry, misty when she's embarrassed, and so on. While working on faces, I sketched a version where feathers sprouted from where her ears would be. Skyen liked that idea a lot as a way to further separate Janna from humans, and so we both implemented it. But in my version, I have removed Janna's bangs so I can better show how the feathers and her face blend into her true and intangible cloud-like form. Then there's the eyes. Eyes can tell you a lot about a person. Humans have smaller pupils than, say, dogs and cats, and it allows us to create a lot of expression in our faces. Subtle glances, held gazes, and flickers of the eyes can tell you a lot about the mood or intentions of the person that you're looking at. So for Janna, I took all of that away. I enlarged her pupils, deleted her irises, and replaced them with a miniature sky, inspired by Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. She looks kind of like a stylized anime girl a bit with those eyes, and since anime proportions look off in real life, it helps make her feel more uncanny. The original idea of the orange eye shadow was that it was meant to bring in some of the color palette of Janna's symbolic animal, the bluebird. I ultimately ended up basing her bluebird on a mountain bluebird which has a white belly, but at that point the orange had grown on me and it felt off when I took it away. Combined with her new feather adornments, her appearance reminds me a bit of the Tooth Fairy from Rise of the Guardians, actually, and I quite liked that fairy connection, even if perhaps it's a bit tenuous. I went into this project a bit unsure of where I wanted to go, especially compared to the Ash video, but in the end, I quite like where everything ended up, and I hope that you do too. At the start of the design process, we identified four major problems with Janna that we wanted to address, and we wanted to address them in a different way than Viraku did in their redesign. So, from the top. Number one, she looks like a generic elf mage, and I feel pretty confident in saying we dealt with that one. Apple Cork's design is the more human looking of our two, but a generic elf mage, she is not. Number two, she does not look clearly like a spirit or a god. 
I feel pretty good about how we addressed this one. Between the cloudy hair and human eyes and swirling body, she reads pretty strongly as a supernatural being of some sort. And I think that by removing her staff, we also remove the implication that she's a magic caster working through special tools or implements. So her form reads more like a natural state, a natural outcome of her powers, not like a transformation spell. She looks like something that has the natural power to take on a wind form. She looks like like she is the wind. Number three, she has no visual connection to her region, Zon, or her past as a sea goddess. This one is more mixed. We both decided that we'd prefer not to have her carry too many physical objects around, whether a staff or fashion or trinkets. I opted for the fishing net cloak to hint at it a little bit, while Applecork zeroed in on making her look specifically like a god to focus on that aspect of her character. The trouble is, the aesthetic of Son, especially, is based on punk and technology, neither of which really fit with our concepts. A different design execution could choose to focus on those elements instead, but we decided to prioritize the aspect of being a goddess at the cost of showing her off as a champion either from the sea or from Zon. Number four, her design is sexy for no discernible or useful reason. We showed you briefly some of the ways that you could make Janna sexy or a sexualized design if you wanted to that would be more interesting than the base version, but we both went pretty hard in the opposite direction. Apple Cork's Janna, I would say, is the more conventionally feminine of our designs, and she is very pretty, but she takes more after Wild Rift Janna, toning down the sexualization while using the costume to imply the non-human nature of the wearer. So, in summary, I think we did a pretty good job of proposing alternatives both to vanilla Janna and to Varaku's very different but still excellent version of the character. And as I have stressed half a dozen times already, but which I'm gonna stress again just in case, no design is perfect. And none of this is meant to, air quotes, fix the original Janna. Because looking at a design in terms of a binary wrong or right, as though there is a perfect set of solutions for a given problem, simply isn't a useful way to understand character design. Having said that, what we've presented here is a set of arguments that we stand by. We believe that our proposed changes are better than what's in the game already. We believe that our designs do a better job of telling the character's story, and that they are more interesting, and that they are, at least in the context of League of Legends, unique. These beliefs are subjective, but they are supported by arguments and analysis. That's what this video is. And you are fully entitled, of course, to disagree. In fact, I welcome that, and you're welcome to tell me so in the comments. But a good criticism of our designs should be backed up by some level of argumentation and analysis as well. We believe that we, and in this case also Varauku, have built a better Janna. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare, whose sponsorship helps me pay Apple Cork for his time and skills. And if you'd like to improve or learn some new skills of your own, the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. Skillshare is a learning platform, so it has no ads. And at an annual membership, the price works out to less than $10 per month. Speaking of commissioning artists, by the way, back when I was a freelance artist for a living, one of the most frequent commissions I took on was for custom online avatars for people. Heck, I still draw them on occasion. Now, I used to charge 30 bucks for one of these bad boys, but fortunately for you, professional illustrator Ryan Putnam has a series on Skillshare called Digital Illustration Design Your Avatar, where he will teach you, step by step, how to create appealing character avatars from photos and reference, saving you the $30 you'd otherwise have to pay a guy like me to make one for you. Now, that's good value. Thank you again to Skillshare for their support of this channel. Hey, thank you very much for watching. Once again, the artwork in this video was created by Apple Cork, whose portfolio and Instagram you can find linked down in the description in case you want to follow him. You can like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and do all the other YouTube things on this video if you want to. It's helpful to me for algorithm reasons, and it's helpful to you if you want YouTube to actually, you know, show you when new videos are uploaded to the channel. Anyway, this video is sponsored, so I won't do the big self-promotion spiel, but I will say thank you to Isa Bastian, Maruna Andrea, Zero, Lars Kunert, Nathan Price, Darrow Hall, Art of Paya, Fergie560, Jacob Lynn, Zen Ash, Caitlin O'Neill, Gwen Dragon, and Hayton for joining my Patreon in May. Your help makes it possible for me to do this for a living, and I am deeply grateful. 
Thank you all again for watching. Please remember to wear a mask and wash your hands. When the vaccine comes, please take it. It cannot come fast enough for me. And try to act with solidarity towards those who are working to make the world a better place. <laughs>